provide these benefits. I'm talking about it right now. Diverticular disease is two conditions, diverticulosis and diverticulitis. First, let me explain what diverticula refers to. This refers to these little pouches that may form throughout the large intestine. Diverticulosis is when the small, these small protruding pouches form along the wall of the intestine. Diverticulitis is when these pouches become inflamed. ITIS means inflammation, appendicitis, tonsillitis. Diverticulitis means inflammation of the diverticula. Diverticulosis can be asymptomatic. In other words, you don't if you have any symptoms. You don't need to modify anything in your diet when you have diverticulosis. As a matter of fact, a high fiber diet is recommended in general. But if these pouches become inflamed and the person develops diverticulitis, then we recommend a low fiber diet, bland food. If there's concern of a bacterial infection, medication may be given. Worst case scenario is surgery. But the idea is you want this inflammation to heal, then the person is able to go back to their normal diet. Fiber decreases transit time. So this food, the bolus, the chyme, feces, all move through the gastrointestinal tract more quickly when you have a high fiber diet. Thus, the transit time is reduced. Both soluble and insoluble fiber provide these benefits. Fiber also improves the muscle tone of the gastrointestinal tract. When you're using muscles, they work more efficiently. Your gastrointestinal tract really isn't any different. Both types of fiber provide this benefit. This one I'd like you to remember because this one primarily refers to soluble fiber and that has to do with heart health. Soluble fiber may reduce blood cholesterol levels. See, normally bile, which is made from cholesterol, is reabsorbed back into the body. However, bile binds tightly to soluble fiber and it cannot be reabsorbed. So a diet high in soluble fiber by binding to this bile pulls that cholesterol out of the body in the feces. And this is primarily occurring with soluble fiber. That's why you see these kinds of advertisements on, well, regular oatmeal, but something that's loaded with sugar can still make this claim that as oatmeal, which is high in soluble fiber, can help reduce cholesterol and raise your calorie level because of all that brown sugar. Let me explain to you with a picture how this is supposed to occur. Normally, the bile is made in the liver from cholesterol, gallbladder stores the bile, and it gets reabsorbed in this site. In the absence of soluble fiber, little is excreted. However, in the presence of fiber, the bile is excreted because it binds to that fiber and there is less go cholesterol going back to the liver, so more has to be drawn from the blood in order to it make bile. And that helps to reduce blood cholesterol levels. This is what's associated with soluble fiber, not insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber can also increase gastric emptying time, which basically means that you feel fuller longer. It takes longer for chyme to leave the stomach and it slows down the rate at which blood sugars rise. This can be beneficial for diabetics and also folks who have a condition called reactive hypoglycemia. We'll talk about this when we get to the module on carbohydrate disorders. And this benefit is associated with soluble fiber. Negative effects of too much fiber, well, they're not very, they're not seen very often because the problem is most people tend to not consume enough fiber, but too much fiber can cause gas and bloating because it pulls water into the gut. And when the microbes in the gastrointestinal tract break down, fiber, it causes gas, it causes bloating, it causes intestinal discomfort. You can also experience too large and frequent bowel movements, and it may cause GI blockages if you're not getting adequate water. Again, this is pretty rare, but too much of either type of fiber can cause these discomforting effects. I want to talk to you about processing of grains. 
We're going to talk about wheat flour in this discussion. I'm not looking at any of the other flours that are available to folks who have celiac or wheat allergies. Here's a picture of a wheat kernel. The germ contains vitamins and minerals. The bran contains mostly fiber. And the endosperm is mostly starch with a little bit of protein. The processing of the kernel involves removing the germ, the bran, and the husk, which we don't eat anyway, but the germ and the bran are where most of the vitamins, minerals, and fiber are found. Some nutrients are added back to the refined grain products. In 1942, after deficiencies of these nutrients were beginning to get noticed by the government because folks were eating refined flour that had all these nutrients removed, that's what happened was the government passed the Enrichment Act of 1942, which required flour to have B vitamins and iron added back into it because those were the deficiencies that were being seen in the population. However, not all the nutrients were returned to the flour, including B6, magnesium, zinc, and fiber. Look at this picture. It's supposed to show you a comparison of whole grain enriched and unenriched bread with the whole grain being set as our 100%, if you will, through which the other enriched and unenriched grains are being compared. So if we look at certain nutrients, what do you see missing in enriched bread? You should note that the nutrients on the bottom portion, B6, magnesium, zinc, and fiber are missing or are found in very low amounts in enriched bread and unenriched bread. Whole grain contains these nutrients. Now your enriched flour contains over 100%, over 100% of certain nutrients because they've been added back and that's great. And that's a, why grains are a very good source for some people of these nutrients. But you're also lacking fiber, zinc, magnesium, B6, and folate. So I have at the bottom here, whole grain is best. To summarize, plants make carbohydrates through photosynthesis. Fiber is non-caloric. The categories of fiber that we are using are soluble and insoluble. The recommendation is 1.4 grams per 100 calories. That's cocktail chatter or for your diet project. There are health benefits for adequate fiber. The ones that I'm asking you to remember in particular are the ones associated with soluble fiber and its ability to lower blood cholesterol levels. There can be negative effects from too much fiber. And of course, I recommend whole grains, breads, and cereals as a source of fiber and nutrients. All right, thanks.